Today in the workshop, we'll be working with the Pixie 2 camera. We'll learn how the Pixie works and how to use it to detect objects, follow lines, and read barcodes. We'll also hook our Pixie 2 up to an Arduino. We have a lot to look at today, so welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to be working with a really amazing little camera, something called a Pixie 2. Now before I explain why I think the Pixie 2 is so amazing, I need to let you know that this Pixie 2 was provided to me by the folks over at DF Robot. And I'd like to thank them a great deal for sending this wonderful device to me. You will find the link to the product on DF Robot below this video. Now, why do I think the Pixie 2 is such a great camera? Well, unlike a regular camera, such as the one that you would use with the Raspberry Pi, the Pixie 2 is an intelligent camera. This device has an onboard processor, and this processor allows it to do things such as object recognition, line following, intersection detection, and even simple barcode reading. Now, you can use the Pixie 2 in your projects with just about any microcomputer. The Pixie 2 has all kinds of outputs that can be used with all sorts of microcontrollers and microcomputers, so it's useful with a Raspberry Pi, it's also useful with an Arduino, a BeagleBone, or any sort of microcontroller or microcomputer you might have. Now what we're going to do today is I'm going to explain how the Pixie 2 works. I'm going to show you how to use Pixiemon, which is software that you run on your PC to monitor the Pixie. And I'll also show you some sample code for using the Pixie 2 with the Arduino to do things like object detection and line following and barcode detection. So we've got a lot of things to cover today, so let's get started and learn about the Pixie 2. So let's take a closer look at the Pixie 2 camera. The Pixie 2 is a small video camera with an onboard image processor chip. It was designed by Charmed Labs and Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute. The original Pixie was released in March of 2014 as part of a very successful Kickstarter campaign. The Pixie 2 can be used with any microcontroller or computer. The Pixie 2 is trainable. It learns to detect objects which you teach it. It can detect lines, intersections, and very simple barcodes. It uses a color-based or hue-based object detection system and has tracking algorithms to track devices anywhere within its own field of view. It has an integrated LED light source for low-light environments. The Pixie 2 can also directly drive two servo motors for a pan and tilt mount. Now here are the connections on the Pixie 2 camera. There's a micro USB port for connecting an external computer, an I.O. port for connecting additional computers or microcomputers, and two servo motor outputs for connecting the Pixie Cam pan and tilt mechanism. The Pixie 2 has several interfaces. Aside from the USB port, there's also a serial UART, SPI, I2C, and a digital and analog output. The Pixie 2 processes an entire image frame 60 times per second. The device can remember up to seven distinct color signatures. The Pixie 2 tracks every object which it detects within its field of view. The application for controlling the Pixie 2 is called Pixiemon, and it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Pixiemon uses the Pixie 2 USB port to communicate with the device. Pixiemon will allow you to see both the raw and processed video. It allows you to configure the Pixie 2 and to manage the color signatures. One neat fact is that Pixiemon can be used to debug the Pixie 2 while the device is connected to an Arduino. 
Now here's a demonstration of Piximon showing the barcode detection capabilities. Here is another demo showing the line tracking capabilities of the Pixie 2. There are many code samples and libraries available for the Pixie 2 for both the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. The device supports C++ and Python coding. All of the software and firmware for Pixie 2 is open source, and there is a very large wiki and a user community that can give you lots of information for using your Pixie 2. So now let's use our Pixie 2 camera. So let's take a look inside the Pixie 2 cam box. Now when you open it up, the first thing you see is the actual Pixie 2 cam itself, along with a little indication to go to pixiecam.com slash start, where you'll find the wiki that uh, gives you all kinds of instructions for using the camera. Now the camera's just mounted to the top of the cardboard here. We'll take it out and take a little look at it. The camera module itself on the top here, and all the supporting electronics. There's a number of holes at the bottom here. These are used as mounting holes. Um, as you can see, there's a push button on the top here. This is used when you're training the Pixie 2 cam, and I'll show you that in a moment. There's a micro USB connector. You would use that to connect this either to your PC or to something like a Raspberry Pi. There's also a connector over here which brings out the other Pixie Cam uh, outputs, and uh, you can use these to connect to an Arduino. Uh, so let's put the Pixie Cam itself down. Obviously, we'll be using that later. What else is in the box? We've got a micro USB cable, actually a fairly nice quality micro USB cable for connecting it to the computer. Another cable, this is one you would use to connect to the Arduino. This will actually go to the Arduino SPI connector. And so you don't even need jumper wires to hook this thing to an Arduino. That's great. And finally, some mounting brackets. Some mounting brackets and screws. They have um, on the Pixie Wiki, they show you a number of different mounting arrangements you can use with these brackets. The brackets are kind of unique. They're not all the same. Some of them have threaded holes, some of them don't. And the wiki explains a number of different methods you can use to mount this on a robot or another project. And so there you have it, the internal of the Pixie 2 Cam box. Now let's hook our Pixie 2 Cam up to Piximon and actually start recognizing objects with it. Now the first step in using the Pixie 2 is to hook it to your computer and use the Piximon software to configure the device and to update its firmware. Now as I mentioned, Piximon is available for Windows, for Linux, and for the Mac. I'm running it on a Windows computer here in my workbench right now for this demonstration. Now when I first hooked it up, it prompted me to do a firmware update, and that's a very good thing to do because it'll bring your Pixie 2 up to the latest version of the firmware. So go ahead and do that. Also make certain that when you connect the Pixie 2 using a micro USB cable that you either use the high quality cable that came with the Pixie 2 or use another similar high quality cable. The reason for using a good cable is that you're powering up the Pixie 2 using the 5 volts from the USB port and on a long or low quality cable the voltage may drop a little bit and be insufficient to power the Pixie 2. This is especially important if you're using the pan and tilt mechanism because you'll also be driving a couple of servo motors off of the Pixie and of course you'll need voltage for those as well. So assuming you've got the Pixie 2 hooked up to your computer and you've started Piximon, this is what you're going to see on your screen. Essentially, you're going to see a display of what the Pixie 2 camera is showing. And the first thing you'll notice about this display is that the quality is not particularly high. Now, this is actually typical of image recognition systems. Image recognition systems actually wouldn't benefit from high fidelity video. It would just simply be too much information to process. Instead, they use a rather grainy type of video, which still gives them enough information in order to do object detection 
action, but doesn't overwhelm them. Remember, the Pixie is doing this 60 times a second, so it really has to be very quick in processing every frame of video that it gets. Now let's take a look at the screen on Pixie Mon and some of the features. If you go in the file, you'll see a configure. Now this configure screen actually configures both the Pixie Mon and the uh, Pixie itself. Now this tab over here has the parameters that are on the Pixie. And so you can do tuning for the different color signatures. I'll actually be showing you how we can use that in a moment. Uh, there's an expert mode over here for setting up some advanced parameters on the Pixie. Some signature labels. As I mentioned, the Pixie can detect up to seven distinct color hue signatures, or seven distinct objects, and you can expand upon that, by the way, using color codes, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. But when those objects are detected, they come up as signature one, signature two, etc., etc. This just lets you label them as something like red ball or purple dinosaur or something that lets you describe what the actual device is. So it's more human friendly, so to speak. Uh, here are some parameters for the Pixie camera. And here's an interface tab. Now, as you recall, I said that the Pixie could be used, the Pixie Mon, excuse me, can be used as a debug monitor when you're running the Pixie on something like an Arduino. And this is where you set this up. You'll notice over here that by default, my data out port is actually the, I, is the SPI port on the Arduino. And you can set things like the I2C address, the baud rate for the UART, etc. You can put the data out onto a different port. And so this lets you set up the connection you're making to your microcontroller or microcomputer while simultaneously using Piximon to monitor things. So it's a really handy feature. Now over here we have some Piximon parameters and they're fairly basic. The folders that you want to save documents into and a couple of other uh, parameters that you probably won't need to uh, need to adjust. Now one thing to note on the configure that when you change things nothing is actually saved until you hit the apply button so make sure that you keep note of that. Now under program we have four different programs that we can run using Piximon. Color connected components is the one that we're running right now and this lets us do hue based object detection. Line tracking is another one that we're going to be experimenting with in a moment. The pan tilt demo is for the Pixie Cam pan and tilt mechanism. I don't own that mechanism, so I won't be showing you that. And video just lets you see the raw video, which is coming out of the Pixie Cam, because you may indeed want to use that video for something else other than object detection. Now, under action, we can set up parameters for the color signatures. Now, this is where we can actually configure the Pixie to detect objects and assign a signature to it. Although, as I'm going to show you, you can even do that without using Pixie Mon. So, it's quite a versatile device. Uh, over here under view, we can have a couple of different view modes. Now, right now I've got console checked off, and you'll notice at the very bottom of my screen I've got a little area here. It's actually going to print out the commands that are being sent out to the Pixie, so I like to keep that open. Now, over here we've got three other different selections for blocks, blocks with video, blocks, video, and detected pixels. And these will make more sense when we start detecting objects. I'll show you what the difference is on these. Uh, they just give you a different method of seeing things on the screen to interpret what the Pixie's actually seeing. So now that we've taken a look at the interface for Piximon itself, I'm sure you're anxious to get started recognizing objects, as am I. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. Now, in order to recognize objects, the Pixie 2 assigns a color signature to the object. The color signature is a combination of the hue, or color of the object, along with the object's shape. The Pixie 2 will memorize these, and then it can use that to try to attempt to visualize the object when it comes into its field of view. Now, you need to train the Pixie 2 on the object that you want to recognize, and there are actually two ways of doing this. There is a manual method of training the Pixie 2, which doesn't even require it to be hooked up to a computer. It just needs to have a power supply, 
and this is a method using the push button on the top of the Pixie as well as the LED that is on the Pixie and I'm going to demonstrate that to you in a moment. There's another way of doing it and that's using the Piximon software that we were just looking at and you can also use the two in combination training it manually while using the Piximon software to see how the training is actually working. So let's take a look at how the manual training works and then we'll train a couple of objects to be recognized by our Pixie 2 camera. Manually training the Pixie 2 involves two of the components on the Pixie 2 device. The push button on top of the Pixie 2 and an RGB LED mounted in the center near the bottom of the Pixie 2. In order to train the Pixie 2, you first push the push button and observe the RGB LED. After a little bit of flashing, it'll start cycling through different colors, and these colors represent the signature you are going to train. They are as follows. First a red, then an orange, then a yellow, a green, a cyan, a blue, and signature number seven, which is violet. Once you get the correct color, release the button, and the Pixie 2 will now start to learn the object. When you've released the button, the Pixie 2 is now in light pipe mode. The Pixie 2 will try to lock onto the object that it sees in the center of its image. The RGB LED will glow trying to match the color of the object that it sees while in light pipe mode. A brighter LED means a better lock. Once you have a good lock, you press and release the button again to learn the object, and you have now trained your Pixie 2. Now the first object that I'm going to train my Pixie 2 to recognize is this yellow golf ball. I'm going to use the manual method that we just illustrated, although I'll also be using the Pixie Mon to kind of verify I'm locking onto the correct thing instead of using the LED on the Pixie 2. You can do either, although when you're first getting started it's advisable to use Pixie Mon because it takes a little bit of a technique before you get this correctly working when you just have the Pixie in a standalone mode. So let's see if we can get the Pixie 2 to recognize our yellow golf ball. I'm going to hold the ball about the center of the Pixie, which is a good place to hold it. Press it down and release it when it gets red. And it's, it's locking a bit onto my fingers there. Oh, that's not too bad right there. Let's get it. Okay, and as you can see, it seems to be locking in on the yellow golf ball. Now, it's got a label on it that says S equals 1. It actually might be nicer to label that something different, so we'll go into Configure, go to Signature Labels, and for number 1, we'll just call it a golf ball, and I'll hit Apply. And there I have a golf ball. So it now recognizes the golf ball. Let's recognize something else, only this time we're going to use Piximon to recognize it. I've got a little blue flashlight over here. Let's put the flashlight down and try to center it if one can in the screen because it makes it a little easier. Get it nice and flat too would be, be good. Now what you could do is go up to Action. I'm going to set Signature 2. And I use my mouse to go over the area of the device. And now it has set this as Signature number 2. And again I can go in here and configure that as as a flashlight. So now it can spot the flashlight pretty well anywhere in its field of view. At the same time it can spot the golf ball. In fact, 
it can spot a second golf ball as well. Now, as you'll notice when I move the objects around, the Pixie 2 is tracking them. And as long as they're in the field of view, the Pixie 2 can actually track the objects. So there, we've trained our Pixie 2 to recognize two different objects. And as you can see, it tracks the objects as they move through the field. So that's great. So, of course, this is wonderful for using Piximon and all that. But as I said at the beginning of the video, we would be using an Arduino with the Pixie 2. So what we are going to do is see what we can do now by connecting an Arduino, now that our Pixie 2 knows a couple of objects, and see what data we can get back from it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. Now connecting a Pixie 2 to an Arduino is very simple thanks to the cable that was provided with the Pixie 2. The cable connects to the SPI connector on your Arduino and the other end is connected to the I.O. connector on the Pixie. Now I've got mine connected to an Arduino Uno over here. Connecting the cable end onto the Pixie is very simple because the cable is keyed. On the Arduino end, you have to just make sure that you orient it in the right direction. Now on an Arduino Uno, it's set so that the cable is facing away from the Arduino. If you are using an Arduino Nano, by the way, it's reversed, and the cable will be facing toward the interior of the Nano. But other than that, the hookup is very, very simple, and you don't need any jumper wires or anything. So hook up the Pixie to your Arduino and also hook it up to Piximon so that you can monitor what's happening on the Pixie. Now the Pixie comes with a library for the Arduino that you can install into your Arduino IDE. It's available as a zip file. Once you install it, there are a number of different examples that you can run. And we're going to use the CCC Hello World example as the first one. This example is going to look for some of the blocks or some of the objects that we have trained the Pixie to look at. And it's going to provide some information back to the Arduino. So let's take a quick look at that code right now, and then we'll see how it works with my Pixie. Now I've got the code over here, and it starts off with a number of just uh, comments, etc., about the licensing on the code, etc. And then we include the Pixie 2 library. Now we create an object called Pixie. And then we go into our setup, and we set up the serial port. Now notice the speed that we're setting the serial port up at. It's going at this high speed because we're going to be getting quite a bit of data back over here, so 9600 baud probably won't work. After that, we just print the line saying that we are starting with a carriage return character at the end of it. And then we initialize the Pixie 2. Now, in our loop, it's actually quite simple. We're going to go grabbing blocks. Blocks are actually detected items. So, for example, in our last example, every golf ball or every flashlight we saw would be considered to be a block. Now, it uses the get blocks function. Now, if there are blocks detected, this num blocks function will return the number of actual blocks. And so, if there are blocks, we're going to print some details about them. So we just print the word detected. Then we print out the, uh, the number of blocks that we've actually detected. And then we go into a for loop. And for every block that we detect, we print out the block. We print out the number of the block. And then we actually print out this array over here called blocks. And this array contains a wealth of data that we're getting back from the block. And that's just sent to the serial monitor, and we just do it over and over and over again. So the code is actually fairly simple. So now that I've got it set up over here, let's actually take a look at it running. Now for our demo, I've also activated Piximon so we can see what the Pixie is seeing while we observe the data that's coming back from the Arduino. So I've got them both on the same screen here. And I'm going to put one of the objects that we've detected, this uh, golf ball, and put it down. And as we can see, we're detecting the golf ball. Now let's take our flashlight, put it down over here. And now we're detecting two objects, the flashlight and the golf ball. And let's take our third golf ball. 
place it down here. And now we have three objects. So let's take a look at some of the data that we're seeing. Now one thing you can do with the Pixie is you can just hit the stop button and the data will stop flowing. And it makes it a lot easier to take a look at what you're seeing. So let's go take a look at some of what this data actually says. Now we're detecting three blocks over here, which is correct. We've got uh, two blocks, which are golf balls, and one which is a flashlight. Block number zero has a signature of one, and if you'll recall, signature one was our golf ball. Now these are the X and Y coordinates of that uh, particular golf ball, block number zero. Here's the width and height of that particular block. The index number is a unique number that is assigned to every block. So if you look down here, block number two is also signature one, but it has a different index number. So these are two independent objects that happen to have the same signature. Now this age parameter over here is a number that goes from 1 to 255, and when an object first appears in your screen, it's assigned on the first frame an age of 1, the second frame an age of 2, etc., and it goes up to 255. So this is something you can use when you're tracking when an object actually entered the screen, which may be useful information for your program. Let's take a look at a couple of other things that we can do over here. We'll start our program again. And now going into Pixiemon, right now I'm viewing both the blocks and the actual video, but if you want to, you can just view the blocks. And this way, it makes a display that's a little easier for you to actually see because you're not being... Uh, distracted by all the external video in the background. It also makes the Pixie run a bit faster because it doesn't have to dump the video back down on the output as well. On the other end, you can do this, blocks, video, and detected pixels. And this is showing you the view we had before along with the detected pixels, with what the Pixie is actually locking into. And if you find that it's actually not locking in correctly, you can go down here into File and Configure and start adjusting these signature sensitivity pots over here, or sliders if you wish, and use that to fine-tune the Pixie's detection capabilities. So if you're having a lot of false triggers and such, uh, this is a good way of rectifying that. So as you can see, Using the Pixie with the Arduino to detect objects is actually very simple thanks to the code library that they provide to do that. So there's another mode we can use the Pixie in as well, and that's doing things like line following and barcode reading. And so I want to take a look at that right now. The Pixie 2 is capable of advanced line tracking. The device will look ahead to anticipate curves and intersections on the line. It can be used with dark lines on a light surface or light lines on a dark surface. The Pixie 2 is also capable of detecting intersections between lines. The line that the Pixie 2 is currently following is called a vector. The Pixie 2 determines the best vector candidate from a group of lines. It will report the start and the end position of each vector in every frame. This vector direction can be used for navigation. The Pixie 2 can detect intersections. The device can automatically determine which way to turn. You can also make turns programmatically. The Pixie 2 can handle a 3, 4, or 5-way intersection. The device can also read 16 simple barcodes. You can download these barcodes in a PNG format. These barcodes can be used as inputs or direction indicators. 
So now that we've seen how the Pixie 2 can handle line following, intersection detection, and barcode detection, let's run a simple Arduino sketch to exploit those things. Now this is another one of the sketches that came with the library for the Arduino that I loaded earlier. So let's take a quick look at the code. It starts off again with some licensing information, after which we include the Pixie library and define an object that we're going to call Pixie. In this setup, we set up our serial monitor, we initialize the pixie, and this line here changes the mode of the pixie into line following mode. Then we go into the loop. Now in the loop, we use get main features of the line following mode in order to get all the parameters that the line following mode can deliver back. Now, if we happen to have vectors, we'll end up printing the vectors over here. If we detect intersections, we'll print them over here. And if we detect barcodes, we will print the barcode number over here. So once again, using the Pixie library, the code is very easy. So now that we've seen that, let's actually do a demo and see how it works. Now those of you with acute observational powers will notice that I've placed a white sheet of paper against the wall over here in the field of view of my Pixie 2. Now the reason I did this is because when we're in line detecting mode, the Pixie 2 will be looking for lines everywhere. And every junction in my workbench, every object that it sees will actually have a number of lines on it. Now in the real world, this isn't really a problem. The Pixie 2 can just simply lock onto a vector or a barcode or an intersection and ignore everything else. But on the Piximon display, at least in its default mode, you will see all the other lines and it makes it a little bit busy. So I just put the piece of paper there simply to make the display on Piximon a little cleaner. Now I'll also show you a method on Piximon of eliminating all the extraneous lines without having to resort to something like this. So at any rate, what I'm going to do is I've taken a piece of paper and I've drawn a couple of lines on it so we'll see what happens when we track the lines and there's an intersection in here as you'll notice. I've also got this printout of the barcodes that the Pixie 2 is capable of uh, reading. There are 16 of them labeled number 0 to 15 and we can put this in front of the screen and make sure that the Pixie can capture these correctly. So let's go and take a look at how this works. We'll start off with my lines. And so here again I have Piximon and my uh, serial port monitor in the same place. And as you can see, it's caught onto a vector. It's found a four way intersection. It's caught onto a different vector now. Okay, and we got an intersection in there. Let's just stop this for a second, just so we can examine what the data actually looks like. Let's go back up so we see an intersection as well. There we are. Okay, first of all, for a vector, we get the coordinates of the start position of the vector, and we get the coordinates of the end position of it. Every vector, just like the blocks that we were doing or the objects we were doing in the previous display, gets a unique index number. So we can be looking at more than one vector and they'll each get assigned a different number. Here, picked up a different vector over here. This thing that says flags just simply indicates that there are additional parameters that we can get if we are in advanced mode called flags. And there are actually four of them for every vector. But in the simple mode we are right now, we don't display what those flags are because we've got the basic information over here. If we go to an intersection, we find the coordinates of where the intersection actually is, the center of the intersection. And the intersection in this case has four different uh, lines uh, protruding from it, labeled 0 to 3. Each one of them gets a unique index number and the angle at which it's going. Now this one was going straight ahead, so it's got an angle of zero, but this is in degrees, so negative 115 degrees, positive 74 degrees, and positive 157 degrees. And so as you see, it does a very good job of detecting both vectors and intersections. Now let's clear the output here, start the program again, and we'll give it our barcodes. 
And as you can see, it is picking up on uh, the barcodes. They're actually upside down. Let's try it the right way up. That's better. And there we go. Now, again, let's look at the data that we get back for a barcode. And it's all fairly basic. We get the coordinates, the X and Y coordinate of the barcode. We get the value of the barcode. Here's a 6, here's a 10, here's a 6, here's a 12. And there are no flags included with barcodes. So very basically, it will read back the value of the barcode and the location of the barcode. Now, one thing I want to show you. You remember I told you that everything got kind of busy when I took my piece of paper away. And as you can see, it does. There are all kinds of lines and things. Even my hand will give you a lot of data, but there's a way to cut a lot of that down. And one thing you can do is go into View, and you'll notice the options in Line Following Mode have changed. Right now, we're at um, All Features, but if I do Primary Features, No Background, it's just simply picking up on what it thinks is the vector. I'll put my sheet of paper in front of it, and then you can see it's actually only sending back data that's useful and it's filtering out everything else that's extraneous. So for purposes of programming, this is very, very good. Now under View, you can set it down to Primary Features. Primary Features, again, cuts out all the extraneous lines, but it does show you video in that. So you can see the video of where the vector is. And then if I go to All Features, it starts picking up on basically everything. So as you can see, the Pixie 2 is quite capable of detecting lines, intersections, and barcodes. And of course, for a robot, this would be wonderful to make a line-following robot that could respond to barcodes. You can use the barcodes to tell the robot to turn left at the next intersection. Because it looks ahead, it is much superior to a line-following system that simply follows the line that is under or immediately in front of the robot. It's like when you drive down the street. You're looking ahead to see if you need to make a left turn or a right turn down the road. Well, the Pixie 2 is capable of doing that as well. So for line following robots, this is an ideal component. And so that wraps up my quick look at the Pixie 2, but it by no means wraps up what you can do with the Pixie 2. In fact, I've only scratched the surface of the capabilities of this amazing little camera module. Now, I'd like to thank the folks over at DF Robot for sending this to me. I look forward to incorporating the Pixie 2 into some of my future robotics projects. Now, if you'd like to learn about some of those future robotics projects, I would urge you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So if you haven't done Done that already please hit the subscribe button below this video and become one of my subscribers I would very much appreciate that I'd also like to point out that there is an article that accompanies this video as always it's on the dronebotworkshop.com website and there's a link below the video to that article and while you're on the website please consider subscribing to my newsletter. This is not a sales newsletter, but it's just simply a way of keeping in touch with you, letting you know what I'm doing in the workshop, and occasionally surveying you to find out what things you would like me to build for you or talk about on my videos and in my articles. So until next time, please take care of yourself, and I hope to see you again very soon here in the workshop. Goodbye for now.